So uh, let me introduce myself. My name's Derek Hurd and I'm a senior lecturer in Chinese studies. I'm also deputy director of the Lancaster University Confucius Institute and head of languages and cultures uh, here at Lancaster University. And joining me today to go through some of the uh, Chinese studies program is Dr. Ai Cheng Wang. Uh, do you want to say hello, Ai Cheng? Hello, everyone. My name is Ai Cheng Wang. I'm a senior teaching associate in Chinese studies and also the head teacher of the Confucius Institute at Lancaster University. Hello. Wonderful. Thanks, Ai Cheng. That's great. And uh, we're both members of the Department of Language and Cultures at Lancaster University, and you can see there uh, a web link to our departmental website where you can get a lot more information about Chinese studies. And you can also find information about uh, Confucius Institute activities on the Confucius Institute website. So Huan Ying, I should say, welcome. And uh, if you could keep your microphone and camera off, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts and questions via the chat, as I said. And uh, just once more to remind people that the meeting is being recorded and will be shared on YouTube and social media after the session. Let's tell you a little bit about Lancaster and Lancaster University. Uh, I'm sure you all know uh, that Lancaster sits very close to the, the geographical heart of Britain. Uh, and you can see it there uh, in the circles in the top left hand uh, frame uh, sitting to the west uh, of uh, the main island of the British Isles. Uh, and we're very close here to the Lake District, uh, a wonderful area of natural beauty. And uh, we also have uh, close to us um, uh, the large cities of Manchester and Liverpool and other cities in the northwest. So you get the best of both worlds in Lancaster. And Lancaster City itself is a wonderful uh, historic city with a castle, which you can see there on the right hand side at the top. Now, Lancaster University sits uh, on a hillside slightly outside of Lancaster to the south. And uh, it's a fairly young uh, university, um, which has um, uh, over 50 years of history now, but fairly young in uh, compared to some of the other universities in the UK. And it is a um, dynamic university uh, with uh, uh, excellent uh, facilities and a wide range of student uh, uh, activities that occur alongside the, the educational um, provision. I can see we've, we've got a, a technical issue with the slides, so I'm just going to try to share them again. For some yes, reason. I think I'm um, sorry to interrupt. Um, one of our guests has accidentally um, taken control of the slides and, and unshared them, which isn't a problem. It happens. So just um, right. So there they are again. Thanks, Sasha. So this is a slide that uh, we were at and uh, there you can see some of the new technical equipment that we've got. Um, and uh, in fact, in the bottom right hand picture there is the uh, some of the staff and students from the Languages and Cultures Department. I Ching, I don't know if you'd like to add anything about Lancaster from your experience here. Um, I love this city and it's really like it's really friendly and very nice city and the, the campus. Now you can see from the the background that's the camp our um, the cent kind of the center of the university campus called Alexandra Square, and um, which is beautiful, as you yeah. can see. Yes, yes, we have a <laughs> it is it is a large and beautiful campus, and thanks for drawing attention to that, uh, I Ching. That's a a very good point. Plenty of fresh air, plenty of greenery, 
uh, and uh, and lots of good facilities at the same time. OK, so I'm going to hand over now to I Ching to take us through the next few slides and tell us a bit more about um, the uh, degree scheme here at uh, uh, Lancaster in terms of uh, languages and cultures department. Over to you, I Ching. Thank you, Derek. Um, yeah, our um, so I'm going to briefly introduce our department. Our department is called uh, Department of Languages and Cultures. We offer uh, we currently offer five languages. So apart from Chinese, we also offer French, German, Italian, and Spanish. Um, so if you join our uh, department, you can choose a single um, major from one, two, or three different languages. And now you can also choose uh, joint majors for uh, <coughs> sorry for two or three languages, and you can try take Chinese as joint major um, with French, German, or Ita or Italian. Oh sorry, or Spanish, and you take Italian as a minor. Um, and we also offer BA degree in modern languages, so you can take three different languages from our uh, five different languages. Um, and you, you can also take uh, our joint major and minors with a non-language uh, subject. So you can choose a subject from other departments and kind of combine your major or kind of your joint major with our um, language. Okay, Derek. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, so if you choose Chinese as joint major degree, the other language you can choose is French, German or Spanish. And <coughs> sorry, you can uh, choose other disciplines from uh, English language, English literature, film, um, etc. So yeah, we have offered, uh, I would say it's quite a wide range of combinations. Yeah. Um, and another um, fascinating thing about our department is we offer interdisciplinary degrees. So you can have a broad range of courses. Um, so to uh, enrich your understanding of Chinese, French, German, Italian, and Spanish, uh, not only about the culture, uh, the language itself, but also about the, the culture. Um, yeah, so and also we offer um, our, our teaching is research led and our teaching kind of uh, covers um, things like world writers and filmmakers, digital literature and culture, etc. And we have experts in this uh, different fields to uh, kind of lead you um, to kind of have a deeper understanding of the language and the culture. OK. And uh, so currently we have 89 students who um, have who is a major in our department uh, in either one or two or three languages. And we have 80 students who joins uh, who has a joint major with another department. So altogether last year we had 312 students. Um, so I would say based on my, on my experience since 2017, um, here in this department is a very um, vibrant and very dynamic de de department um, in terms of teaching and the interaction between students and interaction between students and, and tutors. Um, another good thing about our department is we are small enough <laughs> so we can offer um, support to students. So in, we have a kind of academic tutorial system, so you can have uh, contact with your tutor every term to talk about your academic um, questions and have a discussion about some uh, generic questions. Like, um, for example, we have close, uh, we work closely with student support teams, um, such as to help you with the mental health concerns. Um, etc. Yeah, I think. Okay, I think. In... It's over to me now. I think. Uh, Gassinger. Thanks, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> yes, right. that's, you've set the scene, and uh, I'll just now take people through uh, some of the structure of the uh, program that we offer here. 
So at Lancaster, we have a very interesting first year. It's called a three subject first year structure. And uh, you can choose um, three different subjects to study during the uh, the year, as the name suggests. Now, they may be, for example, if you're doing a combination of Chinese and French, a Chinese module, a French module, and then you may be um, able to take up a third language as, as another module, or you might be studying something else. So there are different uh, combinations. It's very flexible. And uh, the real strength of the system is that uh, if you're taking Chinese let's say out of interest in the first year, the first year module gives you everything you need to then go on to take Chinese as a major uh, from the second year onwards. So uh, you don't really need to make up your mind and you, or you can change and, and move into a Chinese major if you haven't started uh, at the beginning uh, of the second year. You can start a language uh, in our department either from scratch, beginner, uh, or if you've done a little bit, but you got a bit rusty, uh, or you can uh, start at uh, post-A level if you've already studied in A level. So we have two entry levels. Uh, in your first and second year, uh, besides language and culture modules, you will be uh, taking orientation modules, which introduce you to uh, academic, uh, administrative, and personal development skills. Uh, so for example, in these modules, you'll learn everything you need to know about writing an essay, time management, student life. Um, and going into the second year, you'll find out more about um, the year abroad, uh, which takes place in the third year, and the preparation for the year abroad, so that by the time you get to the third year, you hit the ground running uh, when you go to China or whichever country it is, if you're studying another language as well. We have um, core uh, language specific cultural elements in the first and second year uh, within the module. So, for example, in the first year module, it's a very flexible mix of language and culture. And we look at Chinese culture through key works of art and literature uh, from really about 3000 years ago, right up to the present day. Uh, and so you're getting a good mix of culture and language together there. Uh, by the time you get to the second year, we have a dedicated module uh, which looks at the development of contemporary China, how Chinese culture and society has come to be what they are uh, in the 21st century, looking at that, that crucial period from the 19th century uh, up to the um, 21st century. One of the great things about the Langston modules is that these culture modules, uh, cultural elements in the first and second year are themed into mini modules. So you get five weeks of, of on a particular theme. So the, the course is very clearly structured and uh, identifies some of the key topics that you'll need to know uh, if you're going to become experts on Chinese society and culture, which you will be. Uh, and uh, comparative and pre professional studies there uh, refers to our comparative modules. Now, in Lancaster, we were ahead of the game many years ago. We took the decision to start team teaching uh, cultural modules where we were able to give uh, students a chance to uh, compare the culture that they were studying uh, with other cultures through a particular topic. For, so for example, film uh, or um, identity uh, or let's say social and economic development. And we were able to look at the development of Germany, France, Spain or French cultures, Spanish cultures, so on, in comparison with other cultures. Now, this is the kind of transcultural view that's in great demand uh, from employers uh, these days. Professional studies, uh, well, uh, there's a placement module in second year where you get the chance to do a placement with a company using your language and reflecting on the way in which your language can help uh, you uh, further skills and achieve objectives in the workplace. So we've got that what's called the employability agenda, deeply embedded into our curriculum. Placement opportunities uh, and the international placement year, that takes place in the third year, as I said. So on the third year, uh, you'll be given a chance to choose whether you wish to study in a particular institution in China, or if you wish to take up, uh, for example, uh, a position as an English language teaching assistant uh, uh, on your year abroad. So there is flexibility in your choice there. And finally, when you get to the final year, you come back from China, you then 
take uh, alongside the language modules. Uh, obviously, you will do some cultural specialization, um, which um, is the kind of research informed teaching at its most interesting, I would say, uh, or at its highest level, uh, uh, because that's when your ability to uh, interpret and understand academic text has developed to a stage where you're able to really grapple with some quite deep and complex ideas. And I can see that our slides have been uh, deselected again, so I shall just bring them back up. And they're just appearing and there they are. So now we'll just uh, jump forward back to the slide where we were and uh, move on to the next slide. So in terms of Chinese studies, this is what it looks like. First year you study Chinese language and what we call Chinese in context. That's the cultural program I was telling you about. Second year, Chinese language again, of course, building on what you've uh, learned in the first year. All the skills are covered, reading, writing, listening and speaking. Uh, grammar is a key element of our um, approach too. Um, you've got uh, the uh, shaping contemporary China moments and movements. Uh, that's the uh, cultural module in the second year, which builds on the cultural elements from the first year. And then these comparative modules that I talked about. International placement year, I've already covered. And then here's some specific examples of the final year Chinese modules that you might be able to choose. Um, we do run different modules from year to year. Uh, so these are instances or examples of wh what may be running masculinities and modernities in China, which relates to the research that I do on white collar masculinities, the um, intersections of class and gender in uh, contemporary China. Uh, lo looking at that in, in modern historical perspective and Sinophone literature and film. So Sinophone mm. refers to uh, 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 literature, film, um, cultural products that uh, are perhaps written on the borderlands of China, uh, maybe from outside China. There are people writing in Chinese but, or even from within China, but they're taking a position from the margins of society. So getting a perspective that tends, that tries to decenter uh, uh, um, the, the, the view uh, and the, the typical works through which uh, China is approached. I'm now going to move forward to the uh, international placement year. And here we've got uh, various pictures uh, trying to evoke some of the uh, street life uh, and street art that uh, you will see uh, if you go to um, uh, these different countries on your on your year abroad. Of course, they, they, I couldn't resist uh, including um, some food in the Chinese one, uh, Chinese cuisine being so um, prominent and popular uh, among uh, students and uh, others who travel to China. The international placement year, we have uh, excellent uh, partnerships with uh, a variety of universities in China. Uh, Lancaster University for many years has uh, been involved in teaching and research collaboration in China. We have very deep um, uh, collaborations with scholars and institutions there, uh, which we're able to use to our advantage. The Confucius Institute uh, here at Lancaster is twinned with uh, South China University of Technology uh, and uh, many of our teachers uh, come over from uh, South China University of Technology in Guangzhou uh, and we've had students uh, go to study in uh, South China University of Technology for several years now and uh, we have we have very good uh, relations with uh, several institutions in Beijing and in other places in the country and in fact here's a uh, a fun fact uh, that Lancaster University has a campus in uh, China, in Shandong, uh, which is a joint uh, venture with uh, uh, the Beijing Jiaotong University. Let's move on. Life in Delk. Uh, Delk, what is Delk? Delk is the Department of Languages and Cultures. Uh, and the uh, student life that we talked about uh, at the start of the presentation is a bit legendary actually because we have this set as I Ching was saying we're small enough to be able to get that sense of community going and our students and staff really feel part of a big community so we have what we call the lunchtime clubs which is they're, they're social occasions that our staff are involved with which uh, offer an opportunity for students to chat chat away uh, supported by staff 
in the language that they're studying. Uh, we have trips uh, every year. Um, unfortunately, this year, there's been some th something that I think we're all aware of, gotten away of organizing our trips, but uh, in a normal year, and uh, we will uh, always be sending students out. We've had uh, to, to various countries and we've sent uh, uh, students to China for several years now. Uh, and uh, that's uh, a trip that takes into uh, takes take students into Beijing to see the Great Wall, Summer Palace and various other attractions of Beijing and then whisks people down to um, South uh, China uh, on the uh, high speed train and uh, with a chance to meet students in our partner institution down in Guangzhou and taking some of the sites there. Uh, on the right hand side there you can see our resource centre uh, which is uh, um, a place for DELC students uh, to socialize and to study and to uh, refer to the various um, sources in their books and materials and uh, uh, and other kinds of audiovisual resources and and so it's a it's a real favorite place for DELC students to unwind as well as to get some serious studying done done Let's now turn to Lancaster University Confucius Institute. I was going to turn now to Ai Ching to start off on this slide. Ai Ching, do you want to take us through some of them and then I'll, I'll uh, join in with some of the some of the other ones. OK, thank you, Derek. Um, hello, everybody again. <laughs> hello again. Um, so uh, I'm the head teacher of the Confucius Institute. So I uh, kind of joined the Confucius Institute since 2017 and I have witnessed the the kind of development of the Confucius Institute in terms of both the teaching and also the, the building itself. Uh, the building is newly furbished in 2019, I think. It's a very modern building, as you can see from the picture. And the designing of the building is based on the Chinese philosophy of uh, the sky is round and the earth is Square, I think it's so called Tian Yuan Tifang in Chinese. Um, yeah, the Confu um, we got the great news that we won the Confucius Institute of the Year in 2019, and that was among, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think among hundreds of. Yes, over 500. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, thank you, over 500 Confucius Institute in across the world. So that was really. Um, achievement to um, to show that our teaching and uh, culture activities. Uh, apart from the Confucius Institute here at Lancaster University, we also have other teaching sites. We have two classrooms. So we have uh, the, the so-called classroom is kind of um, teaching Chinese and Chinese culture at local schools. So we have two teaching classroom, Confucius classrooms at Blackpool. And we also have a teaching site at Tolly House Museum. As well. um, and we are all, all, uh, we're going to have a new teaching site in Morecambe very soon. Um, so, yeah, we, um, I don't know, Derek, how many do, Shall I do you over? want to? Yes, uh, you've, done, you, yeah. you've done the first yes. four, right? I can do the next four. That's, yeah, that's fair, fair, fair division. Of... Share this slide. I don't know how much I need to, I, I should. Fair so, division of Yeah, paper. so it's yeah, up to you. Thank Great, you. thanks, Ai Ching. So China Days are something that we deliver in the local in the local community to schools uh, primarily. So uh, we. Uh, have great relationship with many schools in not just in Lancaster, Morecambe, Blackpool, but across the Northwest. Uh, and uh, our intrepid team of uh, Confucius Institute teachers and assistant teachers head out into the uh, into the Northwest region to deliver uh, China Days, and these uh, can be arranged with the teachers from the Blackpool. Uh, schools as well, uh, and our, our teaching site in, up in Carlisle there, Tully House Museum. That's a very unique um, collaboration. Not many Confucius Institutes have a teaching site in a museum. We've done a lot of great work with them, uh, very innovative work. Uh, engagement with local communities, of course, is one of our great missions is to share Chinese language and culture. Uh, so there's local festivals such as Light Up Lancaster, when the, the whole town uh, lights up with uh, various um, uh, artistic uh, endeavors. Chinese New Year celebrations are a, a great favorite, of course, and we've been uh, very much involved with the uh, local council and the local community institutions in supporting them 
um, and uh, providing uh, 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 various activities for them. Dragon boat racing I put down because uh, we do enter a dragon boat racing competition every year and we call upon our students, staff, uh, local community, anybody who uh, we can convince should give it a, a go. And uh, uh, we have um, a competition with um, uh, the our, our friends in the Northwest region at other Confucius Institutes. And, uh, you know, it's I say friends, but when it comes to dragon boat racing, it sometimes gets a little bit competitive. But uh, there we go. Uh, it's all good fun at the end of the day. Uh, Last year, uh, we, we held a, a very large conference on the Belt and Road Initiative. Of course, this is ch one of China's most important um, uh, strategic initiatives uh, at the moment. It's a huge program of investment uh, outside of China. And uh, of course, we would have been continuing with that kind of uh, uh, activity in terms of uh, live conferences if we hadn't uh, been affected uh, as elsewhere by the COVID-19 epidemic. But as soon as we are free of that, we will be resuming our live conferences. And so Belt and Road is one of the areas in which we specialize. And Chinese language pedagogy. Last year, we held uh, the uh, British National uh, Conference um, uh, of the, uh, organized by the uh, British Chinese Language Teachers Society uh, in collaboration with us, uh, attended by uh, many, many, many um, uh, esteemed scholars from around the world uh, and uh, all talking about Chinese language pedagogy, which is another key area of interest for us here at Lancaster. So uh, we've given you an introduction to Lancaster. Uh, we've talked to you about the Department of Languages and Cultures. Uh, we've gone through our degree scheme. Uh, and we've also uh, told you quite a bit about the Confucius Institute. Now, after us talking so much, it's about time we stopped. It's over to you um, uh, and also over to uh, one of our students uh, who I can see has joined us, the wonderful Emily. Uh, and uh, Emily uh, is back from China, having been there uh, last uh, academic year and survived the uh, all the tribulations that, uh, that and challenges that came uh, uh, with the uh, unfortunate arrival of the um, uh, COVID-19 epidemic. I, Emily, do you want to say hi? Yeah. Uh, hello, um, I'm Emily and I'm currently a third year student studying politics with Chinese. And for my second year, I studied at Beijing Foreign Studies University for as long as I could before, obviously. <laughs> And how 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 does that how did that go, Emily, when you were there? Uh, for the time, I could say that I actually had a really amazing time. I think in terms of language, it's definitely made me more confident just speaking in more casual settings with other people, and obviously learning the culture on like a an entirely different level. Like I have been to Beijing before, kind of as a holiday, but this was an entirely different experience actually living there for myself. Fantastic. That's great. And and how is third year going now? Uh, <laughs> kind of stressful and um, trying to get everything done in time. But, you know, you can only do so much. Uh, that's good. And it, it is a stressful year. Uh, I think the most stressful year of the the um, uh, uh, the program, of course, because you've got your final exams. But uh, you're yeah. quite right. You've got to you've got to just keep keep it all in perspective and uh, as you say you can only do so much and uh, uh, and uh, keep it all uh, keep the research keep the keep the, the study going uh, without yeah. uh, overdoing it so it's, it's, it's a question of pacing oneself isn't it I For sure I remember it I remember it well and <laughs> glad, glad I don't have to do it again but it is the culmination of the entire degree and it's uh, it's a great moment you know to, to to finally step out of the final exam and then um this graduation that comes in. we're going to turn over now to uh our audience who can uh ask us some questions uh so here's a question was it was easy it to easy chinese, chinese students, students when you're at uni in beijing so emily that's a question for you um, because so because I studied politics as well, I was taking um, lectures with other Chinese students. So for my case, it actually was quite easy to make friends just simply talking to people. And usually their level of English was very good. 
um, I guess if you're just studying Chinese language, maybe make more effort to see what societies around. I'm sure there'll be plenty of language societies that are um, trying to influence like um, international students to kind of um, speak to more local students. I definitely saw many advertisements for that. Um, so I don't think it's difficult at all. You just have to kind of make the first step in that sense. What sort of um, socialising opportunities did you take advantage of with the, the, the Chinese friends that you, you made, uh, Emily? And did you get a chance to kind of practice Chinese with them? Um, so, yeah, there was definitely some like language cafes. Um, so any international student could come along and then they could speak to the local students in actually whatever dialect, uh, not dialect, whatever language you wanted. So that could be like speaking to a, a Chinese student in French or speaking to them in English or Spanish. So yeah, there was definitely a lot of um, language using going on um, at the university. Fantastic. I'm wondering what other, here's a question. What made you choose Chinese in the first place? Uh, did you learn it at school? Is that is that for a question That's, for me? I think it, I well yes. Why don't you? you it's a good uh, good point, Emily. Why don't you uh, do that first? Because I think probably uh, people here are more interested in hearing your story rather than mine. <laughs> um, yes. So I have uh, Chinese roots. Um, so it's always kind of been a dream of mine to be able to converse with people in Chinese. Um, not really so much, you know, passing the exam, but um, yeah, uh, so I've actually been learning it since I was quite young. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm very good at it, but I, I've been trying. And then I did the IGCSE in it at school, and then I decided to take the next step and study at university as well. Um, yeah, it's definitely been a journey, but I'm very glad I've taken it. And uh, obviously, it's very applicable nowadays for future career prospects. So I definitely think it's a, a great choice to make if you decide to come here. That's fascinating, That's fascinating. Your, your trajectory there in Chinese and I totally agree with you that it's a very uh, great benefit these days uh, taking Chinese with you into uh, an, an interview with a prospective employer is always very um, impressive and uh, I, I can't resist um, answering uh, the question as well from my own perspective so uh, you know I just a few years ago, when I was at high school, and uh, not that long ago, I I um, was very um, interested in languages, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed studying uh, French and Latin at uh, my high school. Uh, uh, Chinese wasn't offered uh, during the medieval period, uh, and therefore I uh, started Chinese uh, when I went to university at 18 as a beginner. So it, it was quite intense trying to catch up in a sense um, and uh, learn as much as uh, uh, we could before we went out. Um, in my institution, we were sent out in the second year uh, rather than the third year. And uh, uh, so we were kind of thrown in at the deep end. But uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it all. Um, and uh, it was that it was that love of languages that uh, kind of um, incentivized me to, to find a language and a culture that I was really unfamiliar with and take the opportunity to study it at university. I was toying with the idea of doing French and Spanish at university, but then I decided that uh, I should take the opportunity to, to go a little further afield um, and study Chinese. I haven't regretted it uh, since. So um, I'm wondering, um, uh, I Ching, maybe you could say a word or two about um, the kinds of, um, uh, students that uh, come here to study at uh, Lancaster and uh, you know what sort of opportunities there are for them. I'm thinking at the Confucius Institute things like the um, the, uh, the, the uh, Chinese cafe um, and also we have a language exchange scheme um, and uh, we, we're a Han Yu Shui Ping culture HSK yeah. uh, center aren't we I think maybe you could say a few words about that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we have an exciting language partner scheme. So if you're learning Chinese, we are organizing a scheme that ha can help you to find a Chinese native speaker. So you can help them with their English or French if they want, and you can they can help you with your Chinese speaking. So for example, currently we have about 20 
I think tw about 20 pairs of language partners. They are having uh, conversations in their, in their own time, um, online, or I think it's online. <laughs> um, yeah, so they enjoy this language partner scheme so, they, so that, that we can help you to find a language partner to practice your speaking and listening. And about the Hanyu Shui Ping Kaoshi, the HSK test, that means it's the, that is the lang Chinese language proficiency test organized by the Chinese government mm -hmm. or kind of recognized uh, by the Chinese gov government and also internationally. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, um, to show your future employer that you have learned Chinese to a certain level, you can take this uh, test here at Lancaster because we are a test center. We um, official test center. We can organize your test very conveniently, so you don't need to travel anywhere. You, you can simply stay on campus and take this test. Then you can have a certificate to show that you have done some Chinese. And this certificate is um, uh, uh, essential if you want to study in China in the future or to find a job in in um, to apply for. Sorry. Sorry, if you want to find a job in China, you don't have to take this test. But if you want to apply for a Chinese government scholarship and study in China, then you need to take this test. Yes. Um, we offer some uh, drop-in sessions. Well, actually, we are offering some drop-in sessions to answer any questions about this test. So you can, um, our tutor can help you in terms of um, uh, registering registering for this test and also to help you maybe help you to e evaluate your level and find the suitable level you can take for this test yes yeah thank you that's really helpful I Ching um, and these are all great opportunities that uh, students can take advantage of while they're here mm -hmm. now uh, mm -hmm. One thing I should say that Emily uh, was talking there about uh, her time as a student uh, uh, over in China and Beijing. Uh, now, we've also had students, of course, go over to China to, to do um, placements, uh, for example, English language assistant placements. And last year, one of our students, Victoria, uh, went to Xi'an and had a wonderful time uh, over a four month period in Xi'an uh, teaching at a university there and she's made a video about it and uh, you can find that video uh, in our YouTube uh, site. So the Department of Languages and Cultures has a YouTube um, channel and uh, we've got a lot of videos there uh, and in fact there it is. Uh, Sasha's put it into the um, the chat there uh, and, and if you listen to that video you can hear a similar story to, to Emily's, this sense of confidence and you know growth in in, in skills uh, development of uh, all sorts of aspects of one's knowledge is is a real feature of the, the um, spending time overseas spending time in china um, whether it's as a student at a university or whether it's as teaching as a teacher um, there's a there's a lot of advantages there we look after our students on the year abroad. We have dedicated uh, uh, um, year abroad tutors. We call it the international placement year uh, uh, in Lancaster rather than the year abroad because international placement year seems to sum up uh, the essence of it and that we're placing people internationally, um, uh, whether it's a study placement or a work placement uh, for that year. So that's that's that video is definitely worth uh, uh, catching up on and there's several other videos uh, that I'm sure will catch your interest uh, there as well. I thought I'll maybe just um, say uh, one or two words about the first year uh, program and uh, luckily we've got I Ching with us who is uh, a convener of um, the modules in the first year and uh, I Ching convenes modules um, uh, the program concerning uh, language skill development and the, Part, so if you choose to study Chinese at Lancaster, you will study grammar. Uh, you'll get a very comprehensive grammar lecture each week. Um, you'll get um, uh, writing practice, reading and writing practice every week. You'll get uh, oral sessions every week, uh, all with native speakers. 
and uh, uh, these are um, highly trained professional teachers who um, use textbooks and other material to develop your Chinese in a very sustained way. You can also join all of these extracurricular activities that I Ching was just talking about, such as the um, language exchange scheme, the um, Chinese language cafe, uh, and um, of course, even hanging out in our Confucius Institute building is a great way to meet people um, from China and who have an interest in China. I can see that Sasha's put a, a, a recording uh, in uh, a link to a recording of a Chinese taster class uh, in the chat too. So you might want to catch that one out. Uh, 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 just have a little look at it. It's uh, uh, in, in our YouTube channel as well. So uh, Lancaster uh, University, uh, besides the study and besides the uh, extracurricular activities, also offers a wide range of, of interesting um, uh, events and uh, things for you to do. The Lancaster University Students' Union uh, uh, encompasses a, a very broad range of uh, social, cultural, sporting, uh, etc. societies which students find very fulfilling. There are many restaurants, uh, bars, shops on campus, uh, cafes um, uh, to keep you uh, uh, well fed. Uh, and uh, we have a magnificent uh, central library with a tree growing in the middle of it, um, believe it or not, inside. Um, you believe it when you see it. Uh, and uh, that the library is being extended at the moment. So there is investment in the uh, campus. Uh, and uh, uh, besides all of that, of course, um, you, we have got a college system uh, at Lancaster. We're one of the small number of universities in the in in the united kingdom to have a college system and the college system works you know uh, uh, in terms of providing um, recreational activities in collaboration with the students union and also has a pastoral side so they're looking after you taking care of you accommodation is organized through the um, uh, college system as well so all of it combined adds up to a very special lancaster experience I think um, I've probably covered uh, uh, quite a lot there. Um, I Ching, is there anything you'd like to add at this stage? Or do you think that um, uh, we've co more or less covered it? Is there anything I've missed out? I think we have covered pretty much everything. Uh, yeah. Thank you, I Ching. And Emily, I was wondering if, if you had a word of advice for people who were thinking about studying Chinese, but just weren't quite sure whether they should go for it or not, what what would you say to them? Um, I guess for me personally, it just seemed like the most obvious choice. And I have like such a passion, not just for the language, but for the culture. Um, so I feel like if you really want to do it, you will know. And, you know, just, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> just go for it. Yeah, just go for it. Full up. Like, yeah, just go for it. Brilliant. Thanks. Thank you very much, Emily. Well, I think uh, we've um, covered uh, all we need to do. Uh, today and uh, we've given you the taste uh, of the Chinese studies program here at Lancaster. Uh, plenty of links in the chat there for you to follow up in the YouTube channel. Do get in touch with us. Uh, we've um, uh, put a Confucius Institute link into the channel as well and uh, uh, through our um, languages and cultures website. Uh, you can get in touch with us. Um, there is the address for the languages and cultures website. Um, there's the Twitter um, uh, address. Uh, we, we are very active tweeters and uh, there's the um, email address that you can use to get in touch with us. So thank you very much indeed for coming along today. We appreciate you listening to us. We appreciate your interest in Lancaster University. And uh, this recording will be available on our YouTube channel after this meeting, so you can watch it again uh, at any time. And uh, uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're everywhere, uh, as Sasha says in the chat there. Thank you again, everybody. I uh, wish you a very happy weekend. Uh, enjoy your uh, 
Saturday and Sunday. We hope to see you at some point at Lancaster. Do get in touch if you have any questions. Take care and goodbye.